come in now? No. Well, I believe that's everything. I hope so. Yes, it's a lengthy business. You must be tired. I'm so excited. I wish we could take the youngster right home with us. When do you think we can expect to get him? Oh, well, it... Oh, just a minute. I'm afraid I forgot something. I have to sign these. These give us permission to check into every detail of your private life. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that does it, I think. I'm sorry to have kept you so long, but you understand that we must be most careful. After all, it's a child's life. Our investigation can't be too thorough. How long will it be? Well, it all depends. A matter of months, perhaps. But we'll keep you Thank posted. Thank you very much. Eve, dear, we'll be late. <laughs> Goodbye, and please hurry. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Applicants, Harry and Eve Graham. She is 32, he's 38. Occupation, traveling salesman for the Sutter Sales Corporation, dealing in electrical appliances. The company is owned by the Grahams and was started about four years ago. Mrs. Graham appears to be very capable. She handles the office work. Mr. Graham covers the Los Angeles area where they hold a sales franchise for a deep freeze concern. Their income, presently about 20,000. Married, eight years. They, oh, you don't need to wait for me, I'll straighten up. Yeah, I tried that once before, and nearly lost my job. You and you are cleaning up. <laughs> well, go on, go on, you're not disturbing me one bit. Mrs. Graham is unable to have a family. Her problem is of undetermined origin. But we'll check several physicians who have examined her during the past eight years. They will take an older child, four or five years, of either sex. From the preliminary interview, it's my opinion they would make fit parents. But something bothers me about Mr. Graham. He seemed impatient during the interview. A chip on the shoulder sort of attitude. He he behaved rather strangely when signing the, uh, the permission to investigate form. Perhaps this is my imagination. I'll report further when I visit the Graham's home for the customary inspection next week. Whew. Well, that's that. If all the others was like you, there wouldn't be any babies given away in this state at all. Why are you such an old fuss budget, huh? If you had made a mistake once, you wouldn't want to ever let it happen again. Not where a child is involved. No. Well, goodbye, dearie. Uh, Eve Graham. Twenty-two Sutter Street. Harry Graham. couldn't resist him. He's the beginning of a collection. There's a whole army that goes with him. We haven't heard anything yet. Oh, but we will. You'll see. Mr. Jordan looks like Santa Claus. Just like a man who gives babies away. And anyway, it's good practice for you being awakened by mechanical toys. On a teddy bear in the face. Maybe later on a football in the tummy. Oh, you'll learn to love it. You will love it, won't you? Of course I will. 
Why do you ask? Oh, then it's just my imagination. The other day in Mr. Jordan's office, I thought maybe you were sorry we'd started the whole thing. I wasn't sorry. It's just that Santa Claus was such a deliberate old codger, he got on my nerves, that's all. How about undoing my blouse? How about getting yourself pulled together? This is Tom Morgan Saturday with us. You can do the Caesar salad. What else is cooking? Oh, everything you hate. Roast beef rare, potatoes brown. How does that sound, Master? Sounds like the perfect wife. Good in the office, great around the house. I wonder if it will like him. Well, if it doesn't, I'll keep it myself. I remember other Saturday afternoons, but it was always like this. A long time ago. You know, this really is a beautifully planned apartment. Yes, we think so. Mm. Oh, immaculate. You sure you won't have something? A Coke? Oh, uh, could I have a glass of milk instead? Yes, yeah, sure, sir. Thank you. My stomach, it's my work. All the tension. If you don't mind my saying so, Mr. Jordan, I think you take your work much too seriously. It's not worth it. I think it is. By the way, we've begun our investigation on you. Oh? How's it look? Everybody speaks very highly of you. But? I've been a salesman too long not to recognize sales resistance when I see it, Mr. Jordan. I have a feeling you don't want us to have the child. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Thank you. Well? Am I right? I don't know whether I do or not. At least not yet. I understand you spend a great deal of time in Los Angeles. On business. Yes, that's right. Then perhaps you could give me the names of some of the people down there with whom you work. Oh, it's all routine, nothing more than that. You're very conscientious, aren't you, Mr. Jordan? Well, I'll drop you a line and refer you to lots of people in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. There's something else about me I think you should know. I have a small mole right. on my right shoulder. Would you like to see it? Oh, Mr. Jordan, I'm sorry I'm late. That's all right, I was early. What are you two doing in the kitchen? Mr. Jordan's been looking us over. I've seen your home. It's pleasant. Very pleasant indeed. Well, won't you stay for dinner? Oh, thanks. I can't. I have to get back to the office. Lots more paperwork to do there. I'll see you to the door. Oh, thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Ray. Thank, thank you, Mrs. Ben. Thank you. Between you two. Oh, I'm sorry, Eve. I don't know what hit me. Sorry? He said he liked you, but didn't think you liked him. Oh? Anything else? That we could start fixing up that room, and he thought I'd be a good mother. Hmm. For once, Mr. Jordan is right. Well, the star salesman of the Sutter Corporation had better get on his horse. What time's your plane? 9.15. I've got a date with the Clark Company by first thing in the morning. If we can only sell that account. By the time you're a father, just think you can hire one salesman or even two, the way things are going, and you can stay home and... Run the show. What's this? Are you resigning? Well, not exactly. I'll be around to heckle a bit. <laughs> That's a woman's privilege. Well, I've got to pack. Oh, I'll do it for you, but there's not much to pack. Everything's in Los Angeles. Don't you ever get a hole in your sock? And how do the buttons manage to stay on your shirts? Oh. You never bring them home. I've uh, found a laundry that does it. Saves a lot of trouble. <laughs> I'll only be a minute packing your bag. <laughs> product for several years until... Until what? We didn't fire him, if that's what you're getting at. He fired us. Got a better deal. I see. I'd give my shirt to get Graham back. And you can tell him I said so. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. You see, the Grahams wish to adopt a child, and we must have certain information. Well, isn't that nice? They want to adopt a baby. How long has Mr. Graham made his office here? Oh, I guess about two years. Where does he live when he's in Los Angeles? I guess he just lives around, in hotels, motels, wherever he can get in. It's cocktail time, honey. Are you with me? Mr. Jordan, this is Roy Esterly. Oh, I'm very pleased to meet you. What line are you in? Mr. Jordan is getting some information on Harry Graham. Oh, Harry's not in any trouble. Mr. Jordan's not a cop. I'll tell you later. Okay, sweetie. You fill him in on Mr. Exclusive, and uh, when you get through, come on back and have a little shot with me, huh? Uh, excuse me, but could I ask you a few questions? Why, sure, sure. Fire away. Uh, what do you know of Mr. Graham? Oh, he's a good guy. But you called him Mr. Exclusive. Oh, well, I was kind of kidding, I guess. See, we never see him except here in the office, and of course, when he's here, he's buried in work. You know, I can't understand how a guy can live without a little social life. So he's not a playboy, like some cornballs I could mention. Playboy? He's the original invisible man. You never see him anywhere. He's not at the hotels, restaurants, nightclubs. Man comes to town and just like that, he disappears. Mr. Jordan, I have an idea. I'm sure Harry will be calling in. You can get everything you want right from him. I'll call the hotels for you. Why don't you just sit over there at Harry's desk? Well, thank you, miss. Maybe I should see Mr. Graham after all. Yes, I'll wait. Oh, as long as you're going to all the trouble, would you kindly ask the hotel people when Mr. Graham was last registered? Surely, I could do that. Uh, say, Mr. Jordan, uh, your throat must get pretty dry asking all those questions. How about a little slug? Oh, oh you're very kind of you, but... No, thanks. Bob Vance never called, did he? No. That's good, because I don't want to talk to him. Hello? No, he's in Redland. He'll be back the day after tomorrow. Yes, I'll have him call you. Harris Graham. Harry Graham. You've really got Harry Graham on your mind. I'm sorry it took so long, but the hotel's had a check. You know, it's funny, but he hasn't registered any of them for months. Several of them remember him. Of course, he could be staying at a rooming house, but that doesn't sound like him. He likes everything nice. You're very kind. I'm sorry for all the trouble. I... By the way, is Mr. Graham known by any other name than Harry? No, his name is Harry. Look, Mr. Jordan, he was in yesterday, and I know I'll be hearing from him soon. Give me a number, and I'll have him call you. Or maybe you've gotten everything you need, huh? No, not yet. Excuse me, it's that board. Oh, thank you. Graham, Harrison. Harrison Graham, 132 Brink. <laughs> Good evening. Hello. Aren't you a little off your beat? Well, I was coming to Los Angeles anyway for a meeting tomorrow. I'm reading a paper at a welfare convention. Oh, how nice. So while I was here, I've been doing a little checking up on you. Tell me, why are you listed in the telephone book under Harrison Graham? Harrison Graham's my real name. Oh, you changed it? Some time ago. I thought it sounded a little formal, if you know what I mean. 
Yeah, but in San Francisco, you're listed as Harry. The phone company got it mixed up. Look, I'm dead on my feet. I, I just got home from work a couple of hours ago. Suppose we meet for lunch tomorrow. Maybe we can learn to get along. Well, I'm busy tomorrow, but I'm sorry I bothered you. But after all, it is my job. It's, I understand. Yeah. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Tell them to go. You wake them both up. My wife's sick, too. She's in the other room asleep. She's been up with the baby two nights in a row. How long has this double life of yours been going on? About eight months. And you tried to adopt a child. What are you going to do? Call the police. You can't. Not now. Not with her like this. Please, I've got to try to make you understand. Please. I can't believe it. I can't think. How could a man like you, successful, admired, get into a position as vile as this. How? I don't know. I don't know how. Loneliness, I guess. Have you ever spent half your life living in hotel rooms, eating in restaurants with, with only a newspaper for company, walking the streets, looking for a movie you haven't seen? Well, that's the way it was one Sunday afternoon. I was stuck in Los Angeles. I couldn't get home to spend the weekend with Eve. I called her, but we didn't talk about us. She was in one of her executive moods, career woman. You've never seen her that way. She's different now. Anyway, when I got off the phone, I was twice as lonely. I felt as if the walls of the hotel room were closing in on me. So I decided to go out for a walk. Some men on the road escaped their loneliness with women who were easy to get. But that didn't work with me. In all the years of my marriage, I never looked at another woman. Eve was my whole life. Yet, sometimes in those years, I felt a distance between us which was more than miles. When we found out we couldn't have children, Eve was bitter and restless. It was my idea coming into the business. She caught on fast. 
So fast, she doubled our sales in no time. And our marriage, well, it became a business partnership. So on that particular Sunday, my aloneness is like a pain. Visit that fabulous Beverly Hills. It's only $3.25 of food and tax. And it'll give you something to talk about when you get back to your hometown. Hey, our folks, the jury's just about ready to leave. See the homes of all the Hollywood's greatest movie stars. Visit that fabulous Beverly Hills. It's only $3.25 including tax. It'll give you something to talk about when you get back to your hometown. I like movies, though I really didn't care where Clark Abel lived. But here were people going someplace, and I went along with them. Hey, I'm Ladies and gentlemen, this is glamorous Beverly Hills. Here are the most beautiful homes in the world, where your favorite stars of screen live and play. Over there is the home of a woman who knows Hollywood best, a lady who shares her secrets with millions, Luella Parsons. Here we are. On your right is the home of that shy and modest man, Harvey's friend and yours, Jimmy Stewart. Now take a look on your left, and you'll see the home of that funny, funny man, Jack the Miser Benny. Behind that big hedge over there lives a little man who is Santa Claus to the whole world, Edmund Gwen. Remember Miracle on 34th Street? Oh, that was a wonderful picture. Did you see it? Yeah. You missed something. <laughs> I'd like to know where my favorite mule, Francis, lives. What's that? Oh, excuse me. That's all right. Haven't you any interest in how the other half lives? No, not particularly. I'm just crazy about bus rides. Gives me a chance to get off my feet. And here is a home of a man who's good with the jokes and a genius at the piano, Oscar Levant. Oh, I heard him play a Gershwin concert once. He was just great. What is this, the story of your life? wondering where our glamour girls are? All right, here's your answer. On the right, you see the home of that fine actress, Barbara Stanwyck. The White House, also on the right, is where lovely Jane Wyman lives. You know, you just like me for my lighter, that's all. I could give up smoking. Thanks. Don't mention it. If this is a sample of your work, you're not very good at pickups. I know. I haven't had very much experience at it. This is the first time I ever tried to pick up a pair. Oh, gee, that's too bad. I should be better at it. How's that? Well, I'm one of those terrible fellows that frightens the farmer's daughter, you know. I'm a traveling salesman, only a kind of backwards one. <laughs> yeah, you could use a few tips, like... Uh... I'm sad and lonely, just want someone to talk to. Don't know any nice girls in this great big town. How about a few laughs? You know, I wanted to say all those things to you just now, only on the level. Thanks, Coach. Do you mind if I sit here? Well, there's not much I can do about it. You're here. You know something? I was a farmer's daughter once. Really? Yeah. I don't know what it is, but you don't scare me at all. <laughs> well, if 
thanks for the use of the lighter. Bye. Oh, uh... Oh, just a minute. In case, uh, in case you ever need a deep freeze, my name's Harry Graham from San Francisco. Oh, well, that's nice. And mine's Phyllis Martin from here. From here? This doesn't look like very good farmland. You told me you were a farmer's daughter. Yes, well, that was a long time ago. Oh. Thanks. Oops, doesn't work. Well, remember me to Jack Benny. And there's something else you should know about traveling salesmen. You kill me. They have very large expense accounts and frequently buy dinner for pretty girls they need on buses. Well, I must say your star's improving fast. But I'm afraid I can't. Sorry. I'm sorry, too. Yeah, well... Do you like Chinese cooking? Sure. Why? Have you changed your mind? I know a place that has the greatest water chestnuts in town. If you can stand water chestnuts. I'm mad about them. Let's go. All right. Early American Chinese. You're going to love it. Cozy little place, isn't it? Do we have to eat here? Oh, yes, it's a must. Now, why don't you relax and I'll be back in a few minutes, huh? Hi, Sam. Good evening, Miss Martin. Good evening, sir. Uh, will you take care of the gentleman for me? Right. right, this way, sir. I'll have a drink at the bar while I'm waiting for the lady. Good. Scotch and soda, please. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. Dinner's ready. Table's over there. Oh, no. What are we playing, charades? The outfit came with a job. I work here. I don't believe any of this. Well, the pain will wear off in a minute. Just follow me. Egg soup. Very healing. I ordered the rest of the dinner for you, too. Aren't you allowed to sit with the customers? Uh-uh. Maybe later. Well, go on, eat your soup. It's the only genuine Chinese dish we serve here. The guy who owns the place used to run a string of hot dog stands. His name's Hannigan. You sure you can sit down? No, I can't. Try it. He's good. Hey, um, where are all the people? Oh, Sundays are quiet. And all the rest of the week. How long have you been working here? About six months. I needed a job, and Hannigan needed someone to liven up the joint. You can see I've been a howling success. Ah, oh, come on. Sit down, huh? No, I can't. Hey, uh, when'd you say that farm was? I didn't. <laughs> Little place called Pennsylvania. How'd you get all the way to Los Angeles? Well, I wanted to see the world. Well, you started with China, huh? That's right. You know something? They've never heard of chop suey in China. You don't say. That's right. The house specialty here. And the next course, if you can stand it. Well, this isn't as nice as Barbara Stanwyck's, but it's closer to my work. again sometime. So long. You know, we've been together seven hours, and I still don't know a thing about you, except that you're the nicest stranger I ever met on a bus. Well, I don't know anything about you either. Let's leave it that way, huh? All right. I will tell you one thing about myself, though. What's that? On that bus this afternoon, I felt just as lonely as you did. I feel better now. I guess all traveling salesmen aren't alike, huh? Some of us are quite harmless. Yeah, you're kind of special. Good night. I never expected to see Phyllis again.
but I knew I'd remember this day when two strangers helped each other through a lonely Sunday. I felt good again, not very sleepy. We're ready with your call to San Francisco. Yes, thank you, operator. Eve? My, two calls in one day. Well, never mind, darling, this is deductible business. Monkey business. I cheated on you today. I thought you should be the first to know. Haven't you heard the wife is always the last to know? I'm serious, a beautiful brunette, all curves and soft shoulders. Oh, how wonderful. I hope you'll be very happy together. What kind of talk is that? Aren't you even jealous? You won't spoil my sleep one bit. You're mighty sure of me, aren't you? Mm, very sure of you, my darling. She wasn't really beautiful, just nice. Kind of a funny little mouse. Don't you want to know how I made out? Oh, I forgot. I heard that Duff's may open three more retail outlets in Los Angeles County. Got a pencil handy? Better write down this name and address. Are you listening? Here it is. He's the merchandise manager. Yes, I'm listening, Eve. I've got it. I wish you were here with me right now. I didn't even touch her. Touch who? You know, the funny little mouse. <laughs> what a shame. Better luck next time. Harry, I got a special delivery from Mother today. Oh? What's the news? Well, Father's quite ill. Nothing serious, I suppose, but I'm a little worried. I wouldn't worry, darling. I'm sure he'll be all right. Eve, I've got to make the rounds. I'll call you in a couple of days. Good night. Night. And in a couple of days, I did get home. Dead tired and a little bit sick of the deep freeze business. I only wanted a weekend with Eve. But she had other plans, big plans. Tom Morgan, our lawyer, was there. Carl Forbes, he was a buyer for the Redmond chain. I'd never been able to sell him. Then Eve decided she'd try the woman's touch. Why did you ever send your wife in to sell me? She packs quite a punch. <laughs> Hadn't you heard? Eve's the brains, I'm the brawn. Oh, don't listen to him. I'm just Harry's little secretary trying to get along. I was afraid you'd ask me how the thing worked. Well, how does it work? Uh, would you like some more coffee? Oh, no, thanks. Now tell us all about the superior mechanical features. All right, but stop me if this gets too complicated for you. In the home size, there's a special condenser that eliminates the fan noise and the outside moisture. The single phase motor is completely sealed, so it has greater efficiency. And we can prove to you in normal operations that our product will save you in electricity two and a half cents per hour and the lid is counterbalanced. We just happen to have a model in the kitchen. And if you have your combination Phillips screwdriver handy, Mr. Forbes, I'd be happy to take the freezer apart for you. Any questions? <laughs> no, no questions. And no demonstration, please. I'm convinced. Uh, at least almost. Perhaps another little brandy? Uh, Harry, Mr. Forbes would like some more brandy. Harry. Oh, of course. Sorry. Tom? No, thanks. No more. How about a little poker? The evening's so nice, we might play on the terrace. I'm afraid of you, but I'm game. Me too. Oh. Come on, Harry. Let's have at it. You know, I think we're really on our way. I'm sure we got Forbes. It's the power of a woman for you. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. I'm so sleepy. Good night, Doc. Eve, mm -hmm. I just figured something out. In the last month, we've been together six days and 14 hours, not counting when we're asleep. Doesn't make any sense. Did you hear me? Six days and 14 hours. Let's go away tomorrow. Doesn't matter where. Just as long as we're together, huh? Of course we'll go away sometime, darling. We'll go to all those glamorous places that Holiday writes about. We'll do it for his cabin, too. Let's not wait, Eve. 
Our marriage is the only thing that really matters. I love our marriage. So I hit the road again. When I got back to Los Angeles, I found myself dropping into the Canton Cafe. One tea coming up, rice cakes and your fortune free. Shall we go? The decorations are terrible, but the service is great. Oh, come on, sit down, huh? just for once. You want me to lose my job? Oh. What does it say? You will travel far. Well, that's right in the button for a traveling salesman. Here's another one. Uh -huh. Money and fortune await you. That's better. And the last one. Uh -huh. Dance and the world dances with you. Wow. Things are warming up. Do you like to dance? I don't know. It's been a long time. Well, do you want to take a chance with me? All right. When you finish tonight, where will we go? Oh, why don't we stay here? It's so romantic. <laughs> You're a little character. <laughs> Miss Martin, oh. over there. All right. See you later. That night we danced. There were other evenings with Phyllis, too. We asked nothing of each other. I had never kissed her. Never touched her. Just being together was enough. But all the time, I suppose we were fooling ourselves. Ready. Good night, Sam. Good night. Good night. Good night. Tomorrow's my birthday. Do you want to have dinner with me? Help me celebrate. I'd love to. And tomorrow's my day off. I'll pick you up at 7. Sure you haven't anything better to do? I'm sure. Okay. I spent my birthday trying not to think of Phyllis. Still, I felt her closeness. I was finding out that I was not the take it and leave it kind. I knew then I couldn't see Phyllis again, that night or any night. I felt like someone who walks away from the edge of a cliff, back onto solid ground. I felt pretty low, too, about walking out on her. But it was better this way, much better. Come in. Trays over there. Not much of a way to spend your birthday. Phyllis, didn't you get my message? Well, sure, I got it. That's why I came over. I was worried. What's wrong? Nothing serious. I think I'll live. Just a headache I couldn't shake. Yeah? Feels better. Lots better. Oh, I, I brought your birthday present. Nothing much. Just a Cadillac. Well, don't you want to open it? Sure, I'll open it. It's flashy, but I thought you'd like it. it. Smells good. I do like it. Thank you, Phyllis. Well, I may as well put a gift to work. Just close your eyes now. It'll take that headache away. working already. Any happy returns? You know something? Mm -hmm. The headache's all gone. We're going to have that dinner after all. Oh, no, we're not going anywhere. You're going to take it easy. Lady, you have healing powers that are miraculous. I can already hear a soft piano, champagne corks popping, and I know just the place we're going to. We're going to Acapulco. <laughs> You're crazy. Yes, and I need a shave, too. 
Look, I'll go home and get into something slinky, then pick me up in 15 minutes, huh? All right. I'll get into something real uncomfortable. <laughs> you kill me. See you. such a lovely night. This is going to be even better than the last part. I'm glad your birthday only comes once a year. This once was worth it. Mm. Acapulco. You know, I never thought I'd make it. And only 30 minutes from time to time. You know, you fall in love here. It goes with the check. <laughs> when did you make that up? Just now. Have you ever been in love? Mm, I've tried it. You know what I think? I think you fell in love once, got hurt. I'm running away ever since. All right. I bet you read palms, too. Yeah, he was with the occupation forces in Germany. You've heard of those Dear John letters, haven't you? Yeah, sure. Well, I got a dear Phil. Seems I lost out to a little Fräulein. I guess all men are no good, huh? Oh, I don't know. I think there are one or two nice ones left in circulation. He's looking at you, Phil. The stars were very bright, but it wasn't the star. You no, know, you're a funny one. Don't you want to know if there's someone in my life? Whether I'm married, divorced, whether I have six children, whether I've spent any time in jail? No. Why not? What good would it do me if I did know all those things? I like you as you are. The way we are. I don't want anything from you. I'm afraid of being in love again. I touch your hand to spell you cast was a magic thing. We watch the moon in flight. But it wasn't the moon. the moon that brought such delight I felt a thrill so new the moment I kissed you heaven's faded from sight no it was the star Darling, I'm so glad you're back. What's the matter? Father's had a heart attack. His condition's critical, and I have to go at once. Oh, poor baby. I'm sorry. He's such a great guy. Do you want me to go with you? Thanks, but you better stay here and take care of things. Anyway, I got the last seat on the plane. What time? Ten o'clock. I changed planes at New Orleans for Miami. What about money? All right, I cashed a check on the company. How was the trip? Pretty good. We got the Barlow account, but it took some doing. Good boy. Hartnell's and Ventura is complaining about factory deliveries. I got that all straightened out. Oh, fine. Well, I'll take care of the office here until you get back. If you need any help, call. 
I'll have a blame. Maybe he'll pull out of it, huh? I hope so. Ooh, I almost forgot. Oh, lovely. You like it? Well, I'm crazy about it. Put it on for me, will you? What do I have to thank for this? All that new work with Farlow's, or that cute little mouse you told me about. Did my boy step out of line? You thank me. Oh, and I do like this. <laughs> oh, Eve. This last trip. It's no good being away from each other. How would you like me to be around all the time? Could you stand it? What do you mean? One of these days soon we'll put a man on. I've got my eye on a fellow. Oh, I think I'm going to cry. I should be so happy if it weren't. The... Finish your packing, darling. I'll make us a couple of drinks. about something. What was that? Well, about your being here with me all the time. I didn't realize home meant that much to you. I've been so wrapped up in the business that I thought you liked things the way they are, traveling around and meeting people. I did, but I've had it. Now I want to stay put. And I was wrong about something else, too. Wrong? For nearly four years, ever since the doctor said, no baby, I hated myself and you and everybody. I was resentful when you suggested adopting one. I couldn't see taking care of somebody else's child. Remember that? Yes, I remember. I was wrong. What made you think of it now, after so much time? Maybe it was the telegram from home. I suddenly thought of how much my family meant to me and how much they loved me. And it seemed selfish not to pass it along to a little child that needed it. Even if it isn't your own? It doesn't seem to make any difference. You still want one? Yes, of course I do. Well, then, would you see maybe about getting one while I'm away? Yes, I will, Eve. Tomorrow morning, the very first thing. I thought you'd forgotten all about it, that the business was our baby. Will you forgive me for taking so long? Yes, I forgive you. Announcing the departure of American Airlines flight number 516 to Atlanta and New Orleans, connecting with Miami. All aboard, please. Well, that's us. That's how I first crossed your path, Mr. Jordan. I called you on the phone, wanting to know how to start. We wanted a little boy or a little girl. Didn't make any difference which. And we wanted it faster than any child had ever been adopted before. But you told me it wasn't as easy as all that. And how right you were. Yes. You wanted a ride roughshod over all our rules. Now, what changed you? What happened after that? I stayed close to the business, except for three flying trips to Florida. You see, Eve's father had improved, but it took a lot out of her mother. She collapsed. Went on month after month, there was nothing Eve could do except stay there. It had been over three months since I had seen any of our accounts. The business showed it. I had to make the rounds. I did my work. I didn't see anybody but the customers in Los Angeles. Of course, I thought of Phyllis. I wanted to see her, but not the way I saw her the last time. Anyway, before I left town, I dropped in at the Canton Cafe. Hi, Sam. Hello, Mr. Crane. We miss you. Thanks, Sam. Miss Martin here, Phyllis? No, she doesn't work anymore. When did she leave? About a month ago, maybe a little more. Is anything wrong? She said she went well. She was going away. Where? She didn't say. Will you have dinner here tonight, Mr. Cream? No. No, thank you. Thanks, Sam. Martin in? Miss Phyllis Martin. What do you want? Uh, my name's Harry Graham. I'm an old friend of hers. Does she still live here? She still lives here, but uh, she isn't feeling well. She doesn't want to see anyone. Oh, I've got to see her. 
You remember me, don't you, Mr. Graham? I've spoken to you on the phone several times. Oh, yes. Yes, I remember. Come in. Thank you. I think she needs you. Her room's right up there, first on the left. Well, now that you found me again, how, how are things in the deep freeze business? What was it? Hot water heaters? Phil. Hmm? What did the landlady mean just now when she said she needs you? I don't know. Come on. Look, I don't need anybody. I can take care of myself. I'm a big girl now. just as you always were. Why didn't you want to see me? What were you afraid of? I don't know. I guess maybe I was afraid you wouldn't want me to have it. I, I don't think I could stand that. You see, I never had anything of my own until now. Don't be afraid. Of course, I want you to have the baby. I'll take care of everything. some things to do. You stay here and rest a while. I'll be back later. Good. Phil. I'm glad. Terribly glad I found you. Oh, so am I. This is Dr. Wallace. He's taking care of Phyllis. I was just going up to see her. How is she, doctor? Could I speak to you for a minute? Yes, sure. Excuse me. I think she's going to be all right. She's had a rough time of it this last month. Two transfusions. And she's not very strong to start with. Then there's the mental, emotional state to contend with. You can understand. Yes, I understand. I think things will be better now that you're here. I'll take care of everything. Please give her the best. I'm glad she means something to you. She can be hurt just like the rest of us. Fooled me at first with that flip hard act of hers. But that's not the real Phyllis. You must know that. How can a man call a woman his wife for eight years? Someone whom you love who loves you, how can you call her and tell her that you must have a divorce? Worse than that, you've been unfaithful. You're going to be a father. How can you hurt someone so much? Hello, Eve? Oh, Harry, I've been trying to reach you. What is it, Eve? Your father? About an hour ago. I'm sorry, darling. I'm sorry. I'll have to stay with Mother a while, and then I'll come home to you. Can you hear me? Yes, of course I can hear you. Are you all right, Harry? Yes, of course I'm all right, Eve. 
give your mother my love and, and take care of yourself. Goodbye. Goodbye. Not this way. I'm not asking you. I'm asking you. I hate to take you out of circulation like this. There must be a waiting line. There's nothing like that. And no one like you. Are you sure you want me? I'm sure. I do love you, Harry. And I'm so glad I do. I stayed with her until she fell asleep. You may laugh, Mr. Jordan, but for the first time, I felt needed. I loved Eve, but I never felt she needed me. How did you expect to get away with it? I didn't. What did you do when Mrs. Graham came home a few weeks after your other marriage? Why didn't you tell her then? Wasn't that the plan? Yes, that was the plan. That was also the time when you came in again, Mr. Jordan. Do you have some cream? Oh, ho, I have been away a long time. I never take cream, remember me? I'm sorry, I forgot. I have a surprise for you. A surprise? Mm, a sentimental surprise. Come on, bring your coffee. things we've got to talk about. Father wanted you to have this watch. It was grandfather's, and then when father and mother married, it was a wedding gift to the groom. Grandfather said that having a watch and chain made a man feel more like a man, sort of like a mustache cuff, I suppose. I wish I could have thanked him for it. Well, he told me to tell you to take very good care of it because it should be passed down to our son. He said it was a lucky watch and should be kept in circulation. Our son, I'm, I'm glad he didn't know how I let you down. You haven't let me down. You couldn't. Yes, I did. And I learned I couldn't have a child. And that's when I became a little efficient, white-collared girl. I forgot some things. You didn't forget. Maybe I became the absentee husband. I wanted to show the business world we were smarter than the rest. And we did show them. Listen, Eve. Come on. I've got another nice surprise for you. doesn't work. Leave the door open so we can see. I cleaned it up today. But don't worry about your golf clubs. I put all our junk in the closet and I stored the suitcases. Oh, I think it's going to be very nice when we get it fixed up. Go a little slower, Eve. I'm not with you. Remember, Mr. Jordan? Mr. Jordan. When I left for Florida, you said you'd look into the adoption business and you told me about Mr. Jordan. Oh, yes. Uh, now I remember. Uh, I spoke to him on the phone. What about it? Surprise! I called him this morning. He said he wanted to see us both, but he thought he could help us. Of course, maybe a while. Well, so you decided to go ahead and fix the place up? Well, I know it was impulsive, but I couldn't wait. I thought we'd put the bed here, and um, the chest of drawers over here, and one of those little rubber tubs in case he's too small to use ours. Like it. You still do want a child, don't you? Is adopting a baby terribly important to you? Oh, yes. More important than I ever knew before. Except for you, it would mean everything to me. 
All right, then. I guess we'll go see Mr. George. All right. So that's how I crossed your path once more, Mr. Jordan. What was in your mind? Did you think you could live this lie for a lifetime? Well, when I realized how much a child meant to Eve, I decided to help her by staying married until the baby became legally ours. Then I'd get out of her life. I must say, that was both a gallant and a foolish scheme. Graham, you have a little boy. You can see him through the window down there. San Bernardino. I had stopped by the office to clean up my desk. It was Eve's and my anniversary. I tried to get home, but I couldn't make it. Is there a man in this joint that's been married eight years? Eve. Don't look so shocked. I'm your anniversary present. I almost didn't find you. I called all the hotels you've ever stayed in. Where are you staying? Oh. I'm not. I just got back from San Bernardino. Did you get my flowers? Oh, I didn't wait for that. I got your wire and decided something should be done about it. So here I am. Aren't you glad? Of course I am. I was just about to call you. Oh, never mind that. How about uh, closing up the store and buying me a dinner? You bet I will. As a matter of fact, we're doing so well, I'll put it on the expense account. Let's get started on our ninth year. After dinner, he wanted to take a walk. I was afraid every step of the way. Yet I tried to get into the holiday spirit for her sake. For a moment, it was like old times, until... Mr. Graham, if you're going home, could you give me a lift? Some other time. See you, Ricky. Okay. Store executive, son. I have dinner at that place now and then. What does he mean by home? Oh, the Chapman Park Hotel. I stayed there a while back. They live nearby. How about Maggie? Love it. After I put Eve on the plane for San Francisco, I came home to Phyllis and more of my insane double life. I was beginning to act and think like a criminal, afraid to be found out, yet sick of deceit and lies. Hello, Phil. Danny asleep? That's right. All right, Phil, out with it. Surprised you came back. What do you mean? Let it go. No, Phil. I won't let it go. I want you to tell me. All right. If you must know, I'm feeling a little cheap, that's all. Ricky. Worse than that, Ricky's mother. Oh, she couldn't wait for me all the grisly details. Made a wonderful story out of it. You know, just like the Sunday papers. Husband's supposed to be out of town. Secretly meets another woman. Secretly? He might have done a neater job of it, Harry. Yes. Yes, you're right. Getting awfully excited over one, aren't I? There must have been others. No, no others. Well, that's a comfort. I'm behaving like a fool. 
After all, I dragged you into this marriage. Stop it. Don't say that. It's not true, and you know it. Leave me alone, will you? Listen to me. There's something I've got to tell you. Please, just leave me alone. Phil! Phil, you must listen! Harry, get out, will you? Phil! Get out! I stayed at a hotel that night, made a date to see Phyllis the next day. There were things we had to talk about. She said she'd meet me in the park near the house. It's hard to explain my thoughts as I sat there. I had my way out. Now I could put an end to this nightmare. I loved Phyllis and her child. I didn't want to lose them. And I hated to bring them pain. Hello, Phyllis. Hi. Cigarette? No, thanks. How's Danny? He's fine. I had Miss Higgins come over and sit with him. Look tired. Yeah. Well, I didn't sleep too well last night. Neither did I. What did you want to talk about, Harry? I've been thinking. I could manage $85 a week. Can you and Danny make it? Sure. You can get the divorce and all that. I'll pay for everything. I'm sorry it had to happen this way. I never meant to hurt you. I'll come around later and get my things. OK, anytime. Goodbye, Phil. Goodbye. Harry. This is crazy. I can't go through with it. I guess you just gave my ego a kick. Will you forgive me? I do love you so. You big lug. You know I didn't sleep last night. I kept thinking about our marriage. You know, the way we got into it. It wasn't fair to you. Don't say that, Phil. Never. Do you hear me? Please, take me home, will you? You really want me to? Oh, yes. We need you. Come on. So you had your out and couldn't take it. And yet all the time you knew it had to end this way. Now you're going to call the police. Well, maybe I ought to thank you. I'd like a taxi at 132 Brinkman Street, please. That's right, thank you. I'm not a policeman. It's not my duty to do anything but see that the juvenile wards of the state of California are given decent homes. I'll pick up my taxi outside. I can't figure out my feelings towards you. I despise you, and I pity you. I don't even want to shake your hand, and yet I almost wish you luck.
first, Phyllis. Just a moment ago, I watched your sweet face as you slept, knowing I had to hurt you again. And when I tried to say goodbye to Danny, it was almost unbearable. I cannot expect you to understand what I'm about to tell you. I wanted to tell you, that's why I came back, but now there are, there are people waiting for me downstairs. People, what are you saying? All I can do is pray that one day you'll forgive me. Try to remember one thing. I love you. I've always loved you. But you can't go away like this. Well, I love you too. Dearest, it's the only way. Tom Morgan will call you. He knows all about it. is in no sense a hero, certainly. But neither is he a monster. He's an ordinary man that made one terrible mistake. In this case, there's a peculiar sense of irony. If Harry Graham had taken Phyllis Martin as his mistress, some people would have winked an eye and turned their head. But because he gave her and the child she bore him his name, and an honorable place in the community, he must be utterly destroyed. Now, I don't deny that the defendant should be punished. But I do believe that in this case, punishment might well be tempered with mercy. Thank you. As the prosecutor has pointed out, there are many bigamous marriages going on that nobody knows about. The prosecutor is also quite correct in observing that this is a condition which strikes at the very roots of our society. Please stop it. I'm guilty. Why go on talking about it? As the counsel for the defense has brought out, there's irony in this case, tragic irony. I suspect that the defendant may have even loved both these women Perhaps he even needed them both. 
I also suspect that he may now have lost them both. When he's once more a free man, it won't be a question of which woman he'll go back to, but rather which woman will take him back. That decision is theirs. Under any circumstances, he'll be forced to continue to support them both and he will legalize the status of his son by naming him in his will. These are decent women, Mr. Graham. You're basically a decent man, and that's the whole point. When a man, even with the best intentions, breaks the moral laws we live by, we really don't need man-made laws to punish him you'll find out that the penalty of the court is always the smallest punishment. Sentence will be passed by this court one week from this day at 11 a.m. The court is adjourned. Mm -hmm.